Today in class, we started talking about rational and irrational numbers. So just like people um, who act rational, or you can predict what they're going to do because they have normal behaviors, um, also we can apply that to numbers. If people act irrational or kind of spastic, or you can't predict what they're going to do because they're acting crazy, then that also can apply to numbers because they can be irrational. So just to recap from today, if we take a look first um, at our irrational, how about let's go with rational numbers first. A recap from today. A number is rational if you can write it as a simple fraction. So here's an example, 1.5. That number is rational because you can make 1.5 be a fraction by making it three halves or three over two. Here's a couple more examples that you also had on your notes from in class today. Any whole number is a rational number because you can place it over one. Five over one, if it was 10, it could be 10 over one. The number 1.75 is also a rational number because we can make it be a fraction of seven fourths mm -hmm. or you could make it be one and three fourths as well. The decimal number 0 .001 also can be represented as a fraction of one out of 1,000. The fourth number in the, in the column is a repeating decimal 0 0.111. This one is rational because we can predict what is gonna happen. The pattern is the one continues forever. So we know what's gonna happen. It's a normal behavior. It would be a rational number. The square root of two, however, is not rational because when you do it on your calculator, you are gonna get a number that goes on. It is between one and two. It is 1.4142135623. One, and it keeps going on and on and on and on forever. So square root of two, I can't make it a fraction because it's a decimal that's crazy and I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, if we look at irrational numbers, this is a number that cannot be written as a simple fraction. Okay, the most famous irrational number is pi. I can't really make it as a fraction or a ratio. This is a decimal number that has no pattern. I don't know what number is going to come next in the decimal. It's one, four, one, five, nine, and it keeps going and going and going and going and going, but I have no way of determining what digit will come up next. Numbers like that are irrational. So now we're gonna look at a couple examples on your homework. We are gonna look at the last page, the front of the last page on number five. And in this question, it wanted you to identify the rational and irrational numbers. So if you look at them individually, 9.2. I could represent this as a fraction, or right now it is a decimal that ends exactly at 9.2. If you know exactly what it is, that would be rational. The fraction five ninths. Here's a clue. Anytime you have a fraction with the denominator of nine, it's very easy to make the decimal. The numerator is basically the only thing you need to write down. So five ninths would just be the number five repeated forever and ever and ever. We know what's going to happen with this number. I can predict it. I know the five is going to keep going on and on and on and on and on. So this again would be an example of a rational number. The next one in the list is the square root of 144. If you think to yourself what times what is 144, you would say 12 times 12. So the answer is 12. 12 is a whole number. I can predict what's going to happen. It's just going to be the number 12. And as a fraction, it would be 12 over 1. So this is again a rational 
number. When you do the square root of 15, this is not an exact amount. The square root of 15 is in between 3 times 3, which is 9, and 4 times 4, which is 16. If you put the square root of 15 in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal number that goes on and on and on. So I got 3.87298. Three, three, and then it kept going longer and longer and longer. I don't really know what's going to happen with this because when you look at all the digits behind the decimal, there is no pattern. There is no digit or sequence that repeats itself after so often. So this is an example of an irrational number. So square root of 15 would be the only one that you would pick as being irrational in the list. Question six, same way you're gonna do as question five that we just finished. If you look at each number separately, the square root of 81, that's nine. Nine times nine is 81. I know that nine is a rational number. I can predict what's gonna happen. It's just gonna be the digit nine. The next number in the list is four squared. Four squared means four times four, which is 16. Again, it's a whole number. I know what's going to happen. I can predict it. It's just the number 16. So 4 squared is a rational number. Next number in the list is 5.121212, and then the dots say it keeps going. This is an example of a repeating decimal. The point 12 keeps going on and on and on. I can predict what is going to happen. The digits 1 and 2 are going to keep repeating themselves over and over and over. If you can predict what will happen, that is an example of a rational number. Last one in the list is 3 sevenths. So if you divide 3 sevenths, one of your questions said, please make sure you make your decimal long enough to check to see if there is a pattern. So this one I had to be super careful and go out very far. When I divide three by seven, I get 0 0.428571. And then you'll notice on your calculator, it starts over again. Four, two, eight, five, seven, one. And then they keep going. So the 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, these are the digits that repeat. If you can see the pattern and know what's going to happen, you would classify that as a rational number. So in this group, everything was rational, so that you would say none are irrational. On the back of the page, number 9, you have four numbers square root of 49, pi, negative 3, and 5.5. It says to list them in order from the smallest number to the biggest number. Well, I know that there's only one negative number, so it's going to be first, negative 3. Now I'm going to take the other numbers and decide what do they actually equal. The square root of 49. What times what is 49? That should be 7. Pi is a number that goes on randomly, but I know that it's about 3.14 and then whatever comes after. 5.5 is already a decimal for me, so I don't need to change anything. So now using these other three numbers, which one is the next smallest number? Is it square root of 49, pi, or 5.5? Hopefully you're saying pi is the next smallest number. So I would put the pi symbol. Then the next smallest number is 5.5. And the largest number in this list is actually the square root of 49. Then you would also put them on the number line where they fit. If I put a couple of slashes down, okay, let's say I'm going to have, let's say I'm going to count by every other number. So maybe this first one is going to be negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 3, 
five, and then I would need room for my seven on the end. So I'm just going to graph where these belong. And negative three goes right there. Pi would be a little bit past three. 5.5 5 would be just a little bit past 5, and then 7 would be right on your number 7. So once you get them listed in order on the blanks, then it says use the number line underneath to show where these numbers would actually fit at on the line. And that's all you have to do. So tomorrow I will see you guys again, and we will continue talking about irrational numbers.